Agent Nation, my name, of course. Y'all know me. You subscribe to the channel and you leave likes on every video, right? I'm Agent Beamstar. Let's get right into the news. Yo, there's a lot of bad news again. So like, there's a lot of news, but like most of it is bad news. So just keep up. For our first story of the day, NBA 2K stock is plummeting. You might be wondering, how is that possible? Isn't the game doing fantastic? Isn't it selling well? All the microtransactions? Well, uh, let's get some background knowledge real quick. The guys that actually developed the game are called Visual Concepts. The publisher of Visual Concepts is called NBA 2K, and NBA 2K is owned by a company you might have heard of called Take Two. Take Two is gonna be a familiar name because they also own publishers like Rockstar Games, which gave us fantastic titles like GTA V, and you might have heard of Red Dead Redemption too. So how is the company that owns all of these games struggling? Well, they're not. They're actually doing fantastic. In terms of making money, Red Dead sold 18 million copies in seven days. That is, that's insane. Yeah, that's just crazy right there. That is insane. I mean, NBA 2K year after year does better than ever. So agent, why is the stock dropping? Well, the most reputable source in all of gaming and really journalism in general, IGN, dropped this article talking about how the FTC is gonna begin an investigation in loot boxes. So a few months ago, you remember I covered a story about how in Germany, they banned companies from being, being able to use loot boxes or my team packs in their titles. So to the investors or the people thinking about investing into publicly traded companies like EA or Take Two, it really doesn't matter how much money you're making now, it really just matters how confident the market is that you're gonna continue making that and some in the future. And so a potential ban, depending on of course the conclusion of whatever the FTC's investigation is gonna include, now that would be catastrophic to the bottom line of Take Two of EA and to a lot of big publishers. And so for that reason, they're leaving in droves. The situation begins to escalate because there was an article that dropped that detailed the VP of Take Two, Daniel P. Emerson, sold 13,000 shares that amounted to $1.6 million. If the founder at Litecoin taught me anything, it's that anytime the founders or the guys at the top are doing something, I'm not saying insider trading, not even remotely. I'm just saying I would trust what they're doing and do the same thing. Now keep in mind this Agent Beam started talking, right? I went to Yale, Harvard, Princeton, and DeVry University, my guys, so pay attention. Now, this is me looking at some numbers here, okay? I, I, I had a lot of finance classes, so I definitely know what I'm looking at. This is the last five years to take two stock. This is 2014 at the very beginning, and all the way to the right is, of course, now. 2014 was around the time where 2K13, my team, was introduced, starting to pick up some steam. Of course, GTA 5 and microtransactions, the new content was starting to swerve in, and so a lot of people were getting ex very, very excited about the prospect of making a lot, a lot of money. This goes for both EA and Take Two. So 2015 goes by, 2016 goes by, the numbers start to just exponentially go up, just faster and faster. 2017 until you reach 2018, and there's a small little dip. Now, Agent, why is there a small little dip? Hmm. Anytime a publicly traded company needs to inspire some sort of confidence in the market, they usually put out some stats, a tweet, maybe like a press conference, a statement of some kind. In this instance, NBA 2K is trying to do their part in helping Take Two. They put out this tweet saying, a lot has happened in NBA 2K19 this year, so we're dropping our favorite stats so far? When have you ever done that, 2K? You don't drop stats. You keep that a secret, my guys. For starters, over 1 million games are played daily. Who you balling with the most? Everyone's on. Guys, everybody's on. <laughs> and it didn't stop there. They literally have a string of tweets that begin to get more and more pointless the further you go down. Braun and MJ go at it 534 times per day on 2K19. Number 23 still suits up 10,792 times a day. Everyone's on. Mood, when your fans help you get nominated for best sports game of the year, NBA 2K19. Thank you for all your support. Help us take home the award by voting. And of course, if you could even guess what the replies are talking about, what are these fans you speak of, ASAP TK says? <laughs> Kowalski analysis, this is some bullshit, Skipper. <laughs> I don't know what they expected, man. Sometimes this comes in the form of sales. That dip you saw between like February and April, they dropped a lot of sales in between that time to their mobile game. They announced the NBA 2K League draft around that time. Cuts to VC, cuts to the game in general by 50%. 
that's unheard of. And so it makes sense, right? They, people are beginning to lose confidence and 2K tries to do what they can to get people to be confident about the game. And of course, the other titles that take two owns like Red Dead Redemption, GTA 5 are gonna be doing the same. But the reality is until that FTC investigation is concluded, there's no way I see NBA 2K or more specifically take two stock bouncing back anytime soon. I could be wrong though. I mean, keep in mind, it's just Agent Beamstar, Yale. Harvard, Princeton, and DeVry. I know what I'm talking about, you know? <laughs> In my second year university, I had a finance class and I was leading the stock assignment we were doing the entire time. I found that a very fascinating story. For our next story of the day, late last night, there was a streamer that goes by the name Jaw on Twitch and he had an altercation with a family member and for whatever reason decided not to mute the mic and the conversation spilled over into Twitter. Some YouTubers were taking shots at him, calling him the reason the NBA 2K community is so toxic. I'm gonna just let you guys hear the clip and, and then we'll go from there. There's nothing wrong with you. There's nothing wrong with you. That's why you got your kids taken away from you because there's nothing wrong with you. What are you talking about? about the situation he's living with his sister his sister saying quiet down it's late in the night you're, you're yelling and I'm trying to sleep and he was like I'm not with it so they kind of went in a back and forth that began with I gave you a thousand dollars and he was flexing that he was helping her out and then it escalated to that's why your kids was taken away from you and then it went as far as to like he was just saying he's gonna move out he doesn't want to deal with it anymore the whole 2k community was angry at this guy talking about how how could you talk to your sister like that why didn't you just mute the mic stop being so toxic if i said this to my brother he would have beat the living soul out of me if i said it to my parents i would not be alive right now <laughs> So this is out of the question for me. Ja, I'll say this much, my guy, because I had to live with my brother for a couple months before I found my own spot after I left university, and that was torture. I'd be getting excited in a video, and my brother would come out and say, shut the hell up. And I'd be like, man, how do I record if I can't record late at night, early in the morning, anytime he's sleeping, and he'd be sleeping in the middle of the damn day. So I was like out of options. As a content creator, it sucks. Back when I was in university, the amount of noise complaints I got for just talking at the same exact volume from the people above me and below me was insane, which is why now I have my own house. So I do sympathize with you, Job. It's a very horrible situation because he does want to stream, he wants to put out content, but at the same time, he has people yelling at him to cut that out. But at the same time, Bro, come on, man. At least mute your mic. Like, that's the least you can do if you're having that conversation. There's so much personal stuff you just put out in the public. And, and there is no reason all that had to be public except the fact that you made it public. Come on, man. So, yeah, I, I get it. He's being super toxic, horrible situation. But I do sympathize because I was in a similar situation. And when I got out, man, and I got my own spot, I was so happy. I was just a really happy guy. By far the funniest reply on Twitter was from Cole, who decided to do this. Shut your bitch ass up! Stop yelling at your sister! <laughs> what? For our next story of the day, the drama continued on Twitter. Duke put out a tweet saying, it's official, I'm moving to Xbox next week. Nadex replied saying, please come so I can drop your ass off. Duke of course had to respond to that tweet said, let's link so I can smack the shit out of you in real life. And if you guys ever seen Nade play ball in real life, you'd know why that's funny. And probably the funniest bit of drama that happened in the last week was Majestic put out this tweet and it was a photo of him getting 11th place on Ruffles. Now, if you don't know who Majestic is, he's the point guard for Heat Check Gaming in the NBA 2K League. Kobe Yusuf, a player for the Raptors Uprising, you might have seen him in a couple vlogs, replied to that tweet Majestic put out saying, you almost win in everything tough, unlucky. And he's actually referencing the NBA 2K League Finals, the Heat Check Gaming made it all the way to the finals and they ended up losing to the New York Knicks Gaming. So of course Famous, who's a manager for the Heat Check Gaming, responded saying, amazing coming from you. Yusuf responded to that saying, what did I almost win in? And Famous notoriously responded, a spot in season two. 
<laughs> Y'all some savages, man. At first, it just sounded like a friendly battle, right? You know, talking smack with your guys. And then it escalated to... to <laughs> For our next story of the day, on a more serious note, Orlando in Chicago put out this tweet saying, no one cares about me in this community. I have no clout anymore and work so hard to get to 99 just so someone else would hit it. I'm depressed and was already taking meds. I really do feel like my career is over right now. He later deleted the tweet and I don't really know if it's my position to come around here broadcasting it to everybody else, but I feel like it hits on a really important note that not many YouTubers talk about and I feel like this is a fantastic opportunity to do so. Now I'm not talking about the depression or anything like that. In this specific circumstance, Orlando was about to hit 99 overall and then someone took his account and so for a few days he couldn't get access to it. So in his mind, just imagine grinding like eight, nine hours a day every single day for months only to find out all that hard work is taken away from you. You'd feel defeated. And the reality is, is he was, he was trying to hit 99 so he can grind on YouTube. And YouTube is a complicated place. Like, it looks all glorious from the outside, right? It's like you're just uploading gaming content to thousands of people. What could be so bad about that? But it's like, you have to grind so hard just to blow up. And then if you're the few percent of people that blow up, you have to keep working. And there's no real breaks. You don't take weekends off. You, every day is a day where you're just working on something, even when you're not uploading. And of course, the YouTube algorithm punishes you when you don't upload. And so it's just the 24 seven grind all the time. It's all you ever think about. And for a lot of people, it means that they end up getting burnt out on YouTube. That on top of all the toxicity people have to deal with. You remember Orlando, all the stuff he had to go through, that whole bat beef he had with Nadex over the course of 2K17. He didn't ask for none of it. Nadex got banned and his fans were mad and they were just directing all the hate to this guy. And I felt bad for him. And to be honest, no YouTuber wanted to step in the way of that toxicity. And so nobody bothered to help him out. He just kind of had to take the hit for all the toxic things that was going on in his chat every time he tried to stream or his comment section every time he tried to upload. Grinding put out a tweet just a few days later saying something to the similar degree. What if one day I fall off and all of you forget about me? Right? It's a reality that every YouTuber kind of has to deal with. It's like you might be on now, but next year, maybe not. And sometimes it's not even controlled by the people watching. It's really just an algorithm that decides that's not it anymore. Well, I haven't really dealt with any of those consequences yet, and I'm still kind of in grind mode. I really feel for the people that do. So just today, at this day, you only have to do it one time because it makes a huge difference. You wouldn't believe it. Just say something random super duper positive to a content creator you enjoy watching. Cause sometimes I'll get a comment on Twitter or on YouTube or on Instagram and I'll just be like, yo, that really means a lot to me. They'll tell me like what impact I had on their life or uh, how much they enjoy watching the videos or how much they want me to succeed. And it means so much, it literally makes my day. And so you have no idea how much you can help someone out with a comment. To a certain extent, you're kind of immune to the toxicity cause you get it so much, right? How many times people can call me a fridge protector before I get over the fact that I'm fat? and I'm gonna have to deal with it. But every once in a while it gets to you and you have your down days and you don't really know how to deal with it. Just say something positive to somebody today, man. Make a difference. For our next story of the day, ladies and gentlemen, more drama in the Twitterverse. Poor boy Sin and Swante were going at it. And I really don't know what the point of the argument was. Sin put out a tweet saying, love how you can be a super tryhard in the Fortnite community and not get called a no life once, no matter if you known or not. They actually show love and respect you for your skill. Swante responded saying 100% isn't true. It's the same with all gaming, look closer. The situation kind of escalated. Sin said, you trolling or you stupid? Read my text, I said Fortnite community, not all communities. Are you bored? So, I mean, this kind of went back and forth for a very long time until they started taking shots at each other's YouTube channels. Sin said, bro, you pull views from crying. Just stop, bro. For real, for real. Every video you make is crying. LMAO, stop talking, bro. Swante said, anytime I see you streaming, nonstop crying and complaining, same with half your vids, always crying about people calling you a no life. It's never gonna change and neither is how Guys, just use a little bit of grammar, man. Just just try. Try and use some grammar. Help me out with these Agent Beamstar fantastic 2K drama alert episodes, man. I can't be doing 16 takes because you refuse to put a comment in there. Anyway, uh, that's they really just repeated that for like 15 replies. Ladies and gentlemen, that's all there is for the drama today. If you guys missed the past episodes, you wanna catch up, I'ma leave a link in the description and a card above. If not, click one of these two videos, subscribe to the channel, just do everything, man. Buy some stuff in my merch store, say a positive thing to another YouTuber, 
or or to me i'd appreciate that i'm gonna catch you guys later on, on a side note i'm really not depressed i'm an incredibly happy guy i'm just saying i know a lot of youtubers that deal with it so